Hey everybody, Brandon here from CAD Intentions. And in today's video, I've got the second installment in the draft site series. If you missed the first one last week, I highly recommend checking it out. Uh, in today's video, uh, I've partnered up again with DraftSite to show you guys some more features and usability within DraftSite. Uh, today we're going to be looking at Lisp files, how to load them, uh, some of the differences you may run into, uh, as well as some sources and places where you can get some help. Uh, I'm also going to be answering some of the questions you guys had in the last video uh, and showing you a bit more of DraftSite. Let's get started. <laughs> All right, so jumping right into it, uh, in order to load a Lisp, which is something that you may be using the app load command or something similar in AutoCAD, in DraftSite, you can access that same option uh, from the Manage tab up here and then choosing Load Application. This will bring up the dialog box where you can search for your Lisp files. Uh, I've got a couple here that we're going to bring in. Uh, you can import or open the .lsp, .mnl, and .dll options. Uh, one thing that I found is that you can't bring in a .vlx, uh, which some Lisp files or Lisp routines have been compile compiled into uh, encrypting them. So when that is the case, you may need to find or source out the .lsp source file for those, uh, as those will load in cleanly into DraftSite. Uh, so I'm going to bring both of these in, the area M and BK lisps. Just hit open. Both of those are going to be loaded. You can see down in the command window here that they've both been brought in. Just the same as AutoCAD, the majority of your lisps are going to work right out of the box uh, and can be activated with the same command name. So for the BK one, uh, it would be BK. And for the area M, area M. So I'll show you guys the area M lisp which simply calculates out the area and gives you a total of multiple objects uh, down in the command line. So area M, hit enter. It's asking me to select my entities. I'm gonna select them all and then hit enter. So that's gonna give me my area down in the command window here and that's the total area in the drawing units, in this case square inches giving us around 170,000. Uh, and this is just the rough areas of each of my rooms here. So it's one way to speed that up, turning it into a two click operation rather than the five to 10 that it would normally be to add those objects up uh, using a standard area command. Uh, the other area I brought, or the other uh, lisp I brought in there was the BK, which simply t helps you break uh, objects or lines at a certain spot. Uh, so if I type in BK, it's going to ask for the line you want to break. And then I can simply choose a breakpoint and it's automatically turned on snapping to intersections to help you single click break an object. So now you can see I can select these two objects separately and it's broken it right where I clicked in one click. So lisps in general are just going to save you a few steps to a few dozen steps. Uh, but they're a great way to boost speed and productivity in DraftSite. So when it comes to finding uh, Lisp files, there are a lot of options online. Uh, most forums and community groups, including the DraftSite one, you'll be able to track some down. Uh, I also like uh, Catalyst as one site, as well as JTB World. Uh, I've also gotten them from around the web. Google is definitely your first stop. I'll also put a few links down in the description of sites where you can pick up some Lisp files. Uh, again, sometimes commands in a Lisp are going to be different in DraftSite compared to AutoCAD. So you may need to uh, search and figure out which commands are different if you run into any er errors or issues running your pre-made Lisps in DraftSite. Uh, one place to check for that would be in the community forum as well as a handful of other sites. Again, I'm gonna put a few uh, resources in the description of this video to help you guys out. But in general, uh, many of your Lisp routines are going to run cleanly and right away in DraftSite, uh, making it an easy switch. So before we wrap this video up, I wanted to quickly answer a few of you guys' questions from the last video. Uh, first up was, is there a perpetual license available for 
draft site? Uh, the quick answer is yes. You can go to their website to find that or reach out to one of the, uh, on one of the contact forms there uh, and request pricing as well as options when it comes to perpetual or lifetime draft site licensing. Uh, the next question that you guys put out was how does it handle uh, insorting or, or importing an image and then can you align and scale it similar to AutoCAD? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, and to do that, you simply go over to your insert tab here. Make sure you've got your reference manager open on the right here. And then you can right click and choose attach image. There are a few other ways to bring images in, uh, but the answer is yes, you can. We're gonna attach an image. We're gonna go over here to where I've saved the thumbnail for the last video. We're gonna open it. You're gonna get the same options as AutoCAD for the most part, making sure you've got the right file, position, scale, rotation, and then your path type. I'm just gonna hit okay and place this over here. You can see the images come in on my current layer. It's in the drawing now, so I can use the align command, the exact same as AutoCAD. Choose the image and then hit enter. And then it's gonna ask for your first source point. I'm gonna choose this S, I'm gonna put it over there. And then for my second point, I'm gonna choose the exclamation mark and put it over here. So this is just gonna scale up the drawing and twist it slightly. Uh, when I hit enter, uh, it's gonna ask me if I wanna scale, I'm gonna say yes. And then you can see it's scaled, uh, rotated, moved my image the exact same way that AutoCAD would uh, in DraftSite. So that answers that question. Yes, it does work well with images. This is a PNG, but you can use most of the common uh, image formats. The last question we're gonna to touch on was whether or not DraftSite can import DGN files, which are commonly created uh, with MicroStation. Uh, and that is yes. You can simply by going over to the import ribbon tab here, clicking on DGN, uh, and then you're going to get the DGN import dialog box where you can browse and choose your uh, file, select a model, uh, position, scale, rotation, all the usuals, as well as deal with converting units to match your current drawing compared to the original file. Uh, so that's it for the questions for today's video. If you guys want to uh, ask any more questions or see something else in the next video, be sure to leave it in the comments below. And if I didn't get to your question from the previous, I'm gonna try and answer it on there or include it in a future one. Thank you guys for watching today's video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. I wanna thank DraftSite for sponsoring and partnering on this series. Again, if you guys haven't checked them out already, make sure you do. I'm gonna put the links down below. Uh, along with some links to source as well as get help with Lisp files, if that's something you're interested in. Uh, and I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe and like, and thanks for watching. Cheers. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, be sure to check out my last video right here. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe up here make sure you're up to date and you see all my new videos. Thanks again. Cheers.